In the previous video, we covered one way of generating an entity for use in your API platform project. And I'd say that approach would be fairly natural to you if you have any experience with Symfony 2, 3, or 4. Another way might be to use the Symfony Maker Bundle. This would involve adding an extra dependency to your project, but it's only a development dependency, so it's not that big of a deal. However, the API platform has a dedicated generator of its own to help us document our code in a way that works best with the API platform setup. Now, I'd strongly recommend that you check out the documentation for the schema generator component, as there's only three short sections to read, and here we're only really focusing on the how to rather than the why. You can find a link in the show notes. So the documentation for the schema generator component recommends that we start by browsing schema.org, and once on there, we need to look at the schemas section and try and find something that best represents or as close as possible represents the type of resource that our API exposes. In our case, it's a music album and there is a music album schema available on schema.org. Now we need to follow a convention when defining our schema. You can find an example of what we're going for here under the model scaffolding section of the schema generator components documentation. A more specific version to this project is available in the show notes. So I'm going to create a new file under API config schema.yaml. And as this is a YAML file, be careful with your indentation. So you always start off with the top level types key. And under this, I'm defining a music album. The name of this is a one-to-one -one with that that's on schema.org. And from the music album, I want three properties. I want the name, the date published, and the num tracks. Now you'll note that these property names don't match up with what we've been using so far. Don't worry about that at this stage. All we're going to use this for is to generate our entity and then we're going to make some customizations. You can of course define more than just one type in your schema.yaml file. Now once you've done this, in order to generate this new music album entity, we need to run a specific command. And because we're using Docker, this command is a little bit long-winded. So we're gonna run docker compose exec against our PHP container. We want to run this command using PHP and then it's vendor bin schema generate types source config schema.yaml. You can find this in the show notes, pretty much just copy and paste. And if you find that you're doing this more than just infrequently, then I would suggest adding it to your make file. Now, even though we get no output, after running this command, a new music album entity is created for us. And worth noting, this uses private properties and both getters and setters, which is something that we touched on in the previous video. When looking at the entity that we created previously and have been using so far, versus the entity that's created for us by the schema generator component, there are some interesting differences. There's the inclusion of declare strict types equal one at the top of the file. Declaring strict typing is gonna reduce the amount of weird casting and coercion bugs that you might encounter. And even though it is on a file by file basis, I find myself adding this more and more. So it's nice to have it automatically added on generation. The use of the C tag is a nice to have inside the doc block. It's pointing at the music album that this entity is supposed to represent. But crucially, it's also added in the API resource annotation and it's added in the IRI. It's gonna ensure that when we're browsing our API, we have a working link to the music album on schema.org. Likewise, each of the properties has been properly annotated with the API property annotation. And again, each property has the correct IRI. It's a nice little time saver. And of course, it matches up one-to-one -one with that that we specified in our schema.yaml file. Each of the generated getters and setters has a declared return type, although some of these aren't quite what we want. And there is quite a nice inclusion of the date time interface. This is another thing I find myself using more and more lately, what with the prevalence of date time immutable. However, as mentioned, we are going to hit on some problems here for our implementation. The primary of which is that the resource and property names no longer match up with our expectations. Also, as mentioned, some of those getters and setters allow for nulls, which is unwanted. And we're missing an assertion that our album must have at least one track. So my favorite approach is somewhat of a hybrid. I generally take the generated API property annotations and other things that I quite like, and I apply them to my own custom album entity. I'll show you an example of how I do this in a moment. For me and my needs, this is currently the best compromise. Now, however you generate an entity is entirely your decision. The important part is that your entity has the API resource annotation on the class itself. Everything else is just nice to have. 
Browsing to our API's entry point, we can see that we have the music album and the album resource listed. We've not had to do a doctrine schema update yet, so this may be a little bit confusing, but this is because we've annotated both of our entities with the API resource annotation. Now also worth noting is that if we try and browse to either of the music album or the album's resource, API platform is gonna interpret this as a collection get request, but of course we don't have the database table available for either of these entities, so everything just blows up. At this stage, I am assuming that you have completed or are about to complete the final step from the previous video, whereby we updated our database schema and ensured that we have a new set of routes available for use. Once we've informed Doctrine about our new entities and behind the scenes the relevant tables have been created, we can now send in a GET request for this resource and even though there's no data in there, we do get back a valid response. Also, because the schema generator component helped us generate an entity with all the correct API property annotations defined on our class properties, when we browse the context of a music album, we can see lots of interesting information about it. This is really nice. However, I do want the names of my properties to be in line with what we're expecting in the tests. So what I'm gonna do is take some of the information that's been generated for us and copy it across to our original album. And this is what I was saying earlier about my preferred hybrid approach. Now this is kind of tedious to watch because it's just copy paste and you can find the exact entity that I ended up with in the show notes. So I'm just gonna fast forward all the way through this. All that remains is a couple of little cleanup steps. The first thing that I'm gonna do is remove the schema.yaml file. You may be wondering why I'm gonna do that. Well, I actually don't want the resulting music album entity. As we've just seen, I prefer to use my own custom album entity. And if I leave that in the schema.yaml file, then the next time that I run the vendor bin schema generate types command, it's going to go ahead and recreate my music album entity. And I don't want that. Likewise, I'm gonna jump into the database and delete the unwanted music albums table. This is a quick side note there, I'm using DataGrip, which is JetBrain's database management tool. It's really quite nice if you're not seeing it, it allows you to work with various different databases, all from one GUI. So for example, Postgres and MySQL from one application. It's pretty useful on a project like this. Of course, you don't need to use it, but it's nice. Okay, so we're halfway along here. I'm gonna carry on in the next video.